For 70 years after the Second World War, the US Navy has remained the largest naval force in the world. Since the fall of the Soviet Union, the United States had ruled the waves. More recently, however, it is increasingly common to hear the claim that China now has the largest navy. The claim has been repeated by Western media and by more credible sources, such as the US Navy and the Pentagon. There's no doubt that the Chinese Navy has seen rapid growth over the past decade. But is it actually the largest in the world? Has it already surpassed the US Navy? We will be answering these questions. There are several ways to measure the size of a naval force, such as the number of warships and the total tonnage of the ships in your navy. Elder metrics focus on combat potential, including the total firepower embedded in your warships as measured by the number of missiles and the number of capital ships available, such as aircraft carriers. There's no perfect way to measure the size of a navy, and it makes sense to assess the size of the Chinese and the US navies against each of these metrics. The simplest methodology is to count the number of warships, but what do you actually count? In this video, we will count what the US Navy has termed the battle force ships. So what are these exactly? According to the US Naval Vessel Register, battle force ships are commissioned warships capable of contributing to combat operations, either contributing directly to naval warfighting or supporting the fighting ships. They include both combat warships and auxiliary support ships. The combat vessels include any fighting ships at least as large as a corvette, such as aircraft carriers, major surface combatants, amphibious warships, landing ships, and seagoing minesweepers. The auxiliary ships include fleet logistics ships, spy ships, rescue and salvage vessels, submarine tenders, and command ships. In short, battle force ships are what make up the quoted strength of the US Navy. According to an influential US congressional research, sometime between 2015 and 2020, China's Navy surpassed the US Navy in terms of the number of battle force ships, making the Chinese Navy numerically the largest in the world. Based on my own calculations and the publicly available information, this would appear to be the case. According to the US Naval Register, the US Navy currently has 297 ships in its battle force. The Chinese PLA Navy doesn't have a publicly available naval register, but I've built my own database of what would be classified as battle force ships of the Chinese Navy. The Chinese battle force arrives at about 370 ships, around 70 more than the US battle force. The composition of each battle force tells an interesting story. The US Navy has 11 aircraft carriers, 117 surface combatants, including littoral combat ships, 67 submarines, 31 amphibious warfare ships, 8 minesweepers, 31 logistics ships, and 32 elder support ships. The Chinese Navy has two aircraft carriers, a whopping 152 surface combatants, including destroyers, frigates, and corvettes, 51 amphibious warships and landing ships, 14 ocean-going minesweepers, 16 logistic ships, and 62 elder support ships. Note I'm not counting the aircraft carrier Fujian, as it has not been commissioned as of yet. The Chinese advantage in numbers mostly comes down to the surface combatants, and to a lesser extent, the amphibious warfare ships and the fleet support ships. This reflects the focus of the Chinese Navy on the Western Pacific Theater, and specifically the South China Sea, Taiwan, and Okinawa.
and to a lesser extent, Japan and Guam. This means China needs a large number of anti-submarine frigates and air defense destroyers, and their job is to escort China's amphibious landing forces. China also requires a large and capable amphibious transport fleet, including a large number of medium landing ships for its operational needs. The U.S. Navy, on the other hand, is focused on global power projection. For that purpose, it needs organic air support without the certainty of land-based airfields. So the U.S. Navy requires large aircraft carriers. All the other ships are really there to support the carrier. Another strong point of the U.S. Navy is the logistic ships. Which are needed to maintain continuous presence far away from home. The Chinese Navy has some capability in power projection and blue water operations, but its most immediate focus remains the Western Pacific theater. Anyway, if we go by the simple number of battle force ships, China would indeed have the largest navy in the world. But the simple number of ships fail to capture the average size of the ships, and one can argue that size positively correlates with capabilities. One measure of naval strength that takes into account the size of the ship is tonnage or displacement. We will count the displacement of ships as their full load, and the displacement of submarines while submerged. Here we have the total tonnage. Of the two navies, the U.S. Navy displaces around 5.8 million tons, which is more than twice as much as the 2.4 million tons of the Chinese Navy. So, despite having fewer ships, the U.S. Navy is more than double the tonnage of the PLAN. So, evidently, U.S. naval ships are larger on average. Larger ships carry more fuel, ammunition, and supplies. And are more suitable for operating far away from home in a blue water environment. They are better for meeting the U.S. Navy's operational requirements. The Chinese PLAN, on the other hand, has a mix of vessels of different sizes. The larger ships, like the Type 055 destroyers, are meant for open ocean deployment. Some smaller ships. For example, the corvette are supposed to operate closer to home within the first island chain, especially when looking at craft like the Type 056A corvette and the Type 039 diesel submarines. Their focus on coastal warfare speaks to the international tensions already discussed on the channel. Tensions that, due to globalization, will affect people around the world. For example, severing a U.S.-China trade eclipsing $42 billion, and destroying a relationship supporting 2.6 million American jobs, and that's just in the U.S. However, through these increasingly unstable conditions, the ultra-wealthy have adapted to protect their wealth from massive swings, pouring massive amounts into assets that can still climb despite this rampant volatility. In fact, one platform has already sold $45 million of these same kind of assets, returning the net proceeds to investors like us. I'm talking about Masterworks Art Investing Platform, whose team of experts created a proprietary database of art data from the last 50 plus years, allowing them to purchase works they believe will appreciate in value. They then break that art into shares, listing them on their platform, so you don't need millions to invest. Each of Masterworks' 13 exits to date have handed back a profit, and with 700,000 plus users, paintings can sell out in minutes. But you get priority access at the link below. Here's a chart of the amount of tonnage going into each warship type in each navy. The categories in which the Chinese Navy comes closest to the U.S. Navy are in surface combatants and amphibious warships. China has 675,000 tons of surface combatants, 
which compares quite well with the 943,000 tons of American surface combatants. The U.S. Navy fields mostly large surface combatants, except for the littoral combat ships. The Chinese Navy fields a mix of surface combatants of different sizes. It has the relatively small Type 056A Corvette and the Type 054A Frigate, but also very large warships like the Type 055 Destroyer. The Chinese Navy is also not that far behind in amphibious warships, at 480,000 tons compared to the 857,000 tons of the US Navy. China has built a large number of amphibious transport docks, like the Type 075 LHD and the Type 071 LPD. However, overall, there's no doubt the US Navy is much larger when measured in terms of displacement. It is more than twice the displacement of the Chinese Navy. However, the displacement or tonnage of warships provides very little information on their firepower in a raw sense. For example, much of the tonnage of the US Navy is tied in fleet logistics ships, which do not contribute to the firepower of a naval fleet in a direct sense. A far better measure of firepower would be the number of missiles carried and ready to fire. We will be counting only the medium to long range missiles, including SAMs and the offensive cruise missiles. We will disregard the short range air defense missiles because they are mostly for self defense and their function is limited. Here's a graph of the total number of medium and long-range missiles carried by the warships of both navies. For the US Navy, there are around 10,000 vertical launch cells or VLS and an additional 900 missiles carried in deck-mounted launchers. The latter includes all of the Harpoon anti-ship missiles found on destroyers and cruisers and some of the evolved Sea Sparrow air defense missiles. This makes a grand total of nearly 11,000 missiles for the US Navy. Although, do note that the evolved Sea Sparrow air defense missiles can be quad packed inside VLS cells, potentially increasing the total missiles in the US Navy to well above 11,000. Now, let's look at what the Chinese Navy has in comparison. The Chinese Navy has 4,400 VLS cells embedded in its warships. Admittedly, these are not all of the same size. Some of these are the smaller HAJK-16 VLS, which are only able to equip air defense missiles, while others are the universal UVLS that can equip offensive weapons. In addition, the Chinese Navy has a large number of deck-mounted missile launchers, mainly anti-ship cruise missiles, like the YJ-83 and the YJ-12. They have around 800 missiles mounted above the deck. This makes a grand total of 5,200 missiles for the Chinese Navy. Note that, similar to the US Navy, the Chinese Universal UVLS can quad pack medium range air defense missiles, but the HAJK 16 VLS cannot do the same. So, the proportion of Chinese VLS cells that can quad pack air defense missiles is smaller than the US Navy. In broad terms, we can see that the missile-based firepower embedded in the Chinese Navy is around half of that of the US Navy. This is hardly surprising. American destroyers and cruisers tend to be larger and more heavily armed than Chinese destroyers, with a far higher number of VLS cells. American submarines are far more likely to have VLS installed compared to Chinese submarines. In fact, in the US Navy submarine force, only the three Seawolf class submarines and the ballistic missile subs do not have them. All of the Virginia class and the improved Los Angeles class have at least a dozen VLS cells.
not to mention the Ohio-class boats that were converted into guided missile submarines. On the Chinese side, only a few boats of the type O-93B is in have VLS installed. In terms of surface combatants, Chinese destroyers generally have only 64 VLS, far less than the 90 to 96 on the Ale Burks. Some of the smaller Chinese surface combatants have very few missiles and no VLS, such as the Corvette. Although do notes that the Type 055 destroyers are more heavily armed with more missiles than the average American surface combatants. In general, however, US warships tend to have more missiles, and it is no surprise, therefore, that the US Navy has roughly doubled the missile firepower of the Chinese Navy. However, the number of missiles is in many ways a flawed measure of naval power. It overweighs the contribution of the surface combatants, which tend to carry most of the missiles. It fails to consider the potency of heavy torpedoes, which remain the primary weapon of many submarines, especially the diesel-electric subs. It does not adequately consider amphibious warfare capabilities, which rely on air power, transportation, and sea lift capabilities. Most of all, missile numbers do not capture the importance of naval aviation. It fails to consider the capacity of navies to generate aircraft sorties at sea, especially those by fixed-wing carrier fighters. This brings us to another metric of naval strength, which is the number of aircraft carriers, the mighty capital ships of our time, and the number of aircraft sorties each navy can generate without the benefits of land-based airfields. In this regard, the US Navy is obviously far, far ahead, with 11 large aircraft carriers powered by nuclear propulsion and nine flat-top amphibious warships that can be used as light aircraft carriers. In comparison, the Chinese Navy has only two medium aircraft carriers, with a third large carrier on the way. It has three flat-top amphibious warships, although they only operate helicopters, because China doesn't have a Stovall carrier fighter. In theory, the US Navy can call upon around 750 fixed-wing aircraft from its carrier forces as part of its regular complement, although in reality the number of available fighters will be lower due to some ships being on maintenance. China can only call upon between 50 and 60 carrier fighters. Obviously, based on the number of capital ships and the naval air power they embed, the US Navy is far ahead. Of course, the number of aircraft carriers is a very one-dimensional measure of naval power. It is not a good measure. It overweighs the power projection aspects and underplays other missions of modern navies such as coastal defense, trade protection, and domination of the near seas. The number of carrier fighters that can be brought to the fight is only one part of the air power equation. In a naval war occurring in the near seas, a regional power can bring in potentially many, many more fighters from land-based airfields, and even large bombers that cannot be launched by aircraft carriers. Based on the simple number of warships, the Chinese Navy is the largest in the world, but based on other important metrics of naval strength, including tonnage, firepower, and the number of capital ships, the US Navy remains the largest by a big margin. Does that mean the United States has the edge in a naval war with China? Not necessarily. It depends on where that war is fought. The US Navy is built for power projection away from home, while the Chinese Navy is built for dominating the near seas. In a Western Pacific conflict, 
the Chinese Navy would be well supported by land-based air power and anti-ship ballistic missiles, which could well tip the balance in its favour. Chinese ships are smaller on average and more specialised in their missions, while US warships are larger on average and tend to be more multi-purpose, performing many different mission types depending on what the situation requires. If the smaller Chinese ships can be used for the missions they are designed for, this would mitigate the advantage of the greater mission flexibility for US warships. For example, anti-submarine frigates should be used against submarine threats, rather than providing air defense. Amphibious warships should be supporting amphibious landings, instead of doing anti-submarine warfare, and so on. Who has the largest navy depends on what you count. China may have more warships than the USA, but by most metrics, the US Navy is still ahead in overall strength. Still, neither side necessarily has a clear advantage over the other. It depends on the theater and the context. In the Western Pacific, China may indeed have the upper hand. If you want to learn more about China's latest DF-17 carrier killer missiles, a key card it holds in the case of a Western Pacific confrontation against US carriers, please watch this video right here.